Hi, I'm Perry West, President and Founder of Automated Vision Systems. This is the third of four videos. In the first video, we covered what light is. In the second video, we talked about the principal properties of light. In this video, we're going to cover how light interacts with material. Now, when you work in machine vision, you must control how light interacts with the scene that you're imaging. So the information in this video is very essential to your success in machine vision. So let's get started. When light energy is incident on the surface, there are three things and only three things that can happen to that energy. It can be reflected, it can be absorbed, it can be transmitted. In optics, we often call this the RAT or RAT formula. That is, instant light energy equals reflected light energy plus absorbed light energy plus transmitted light energy. Let's start first with reflectance. There are two kinds of reflectances, specular and diffuse, and a material can exhibit one kind or the other or both together. We'll look first at specular reflectance, reflection of light off a shiny or mirror-like surface. So here we have a polished piece of metal. If I wave my hand in front of it, you can see the hand's reflection also. I'll place the metal down on the table, so the beam of light will reflect off of it. You can see that the light reflects off of the metal, just like you'd expect it to reflect off of a mirror. I'll trace the light path with my finger. Here is a diagram of specular reflection. One characteristic is that a beam of light reflects off and remains a beam of light. The other characteristic is that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. What if the material isn't mirror-like? Let's try a plain white piece of copy paper. Here you see the incident light beam hitting the paper. Unlike a mirrored surface, though, the reflected light is dispersed into a range of angles. We call this diffuse reflection. The exact range of angles depends upon the properties of the material. A conceptual model for a diffused reflecting surface is a mirror that's broken into microscopic pieces, and each piece is randomly oriented in angle. The range of angles over which the pieces are oriented gives the surface its characteristic spread. There is a special case of a diffusely reflecting surface, where the diffuse light energy varies as the cosine of the angle of reflection. This surface is called Lambertian, and it is considered a perfect reflector because the brightness of the surface is independent of the angle from which it is viewed. It is possible to have both specular and diffuse reflection at the same time. Here I have a piece of white copy paper with a piece of plastic sitting on top of it. You can see that both the specular reflection off of the plastic surface and the diffuse reflection off of the paper below it are evident. Next, let's look at absorption, where the light energy is absorbed by the material. In our test setup, in place of the mirror or piece of paper, I'll put a piece of black felt cloth. The felt absorbs virtually all of the light energy. None is reflected specularly or diffusely. Well, what happens to the light energy that's absorbed? For almost all materials, the light energy is converted into heat. There are a couple of notable exceptions that are important in machine vision. We'll cover those in the next video. The final effect we want to talk about in light and material is transmission, light passing through the material. Transparent materials allow light to pass through, usually with very little attenuation. At first thought, it might appear as though the material has little effect on the light. 
but this notion would be an error. The density of the material causes light to slow down. The result of that slowing is that the wave fronts become closer together. The frequency of the electromagnetic wave does not change, but the spacing of the waves, or the wavelength, becomes shorter while the light energy is in the material. When the light exits the material, it resumes its original speed and wavelength. The ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum, usually represented by C sub-zero, to the speed of light in the material, usually represented either by just the lowercase c or the lowercase c with some subscript, is the index of refraction. The index of refraction is conventionally represented by the lowercase n. Here are some examples of indices of refraction. Vacuum, by definition, is one. Air, being slightly denser than vacuum, is around 1.0003. Water is around 1.33. Acrylic plastic is about 1.493. And glass is in the range of 1.55. In the previous animation, light waves were incident on the material normal to the surface. Something interesting happens when light waves are incident to the material surface at a different angle, as shown in this animation. Since one end of a wavefront is incident on the material earlier than other parts of the same wavefront, it starts slowing first. The rest of the wavefront begins to slow at later times as it enters the material. The result is that the direction of the wavefront changes. When light moves from a lower index of refraction to a higher index of refraction, the angle decreases. When going from a higher to a lower index of refraction, the angle increases. This effect is refraction. The light bends. Refraction is what makes a drinking straw appear to bend in a glass of water. I'll put a straw in this glass and fill the glass with water. The straw isn't really bent, it just appears to be bent. Refraction is the property that makes lenses work. Let's do one more demonstration of refraction using this plastic block. As I rotate the block, you can see that the light is moved up and down. This is due to refraction. There's a simple relationship known as Snell's Law that can be used to calculate how much light will refract. Now the good news is you don't need to memorize this formula because we just don't use it in machine vision. It's just important to know that yes, it is possible to model optical systems and the refraction in them. Before we leave transmission, we should note that there are materials that scatter light they transmit, resulting in diffuse transmission. Here we see a piece of plastic that has one side roughened. There are other diffuse materials that have the scattering sites internally, such as white plexiglass. We call these materials translucent. Something important to know about all three interactions, reflection, absorption, and transmission, is that they depend on the material's property and the wavelength of light. For example, look at this color test chart. When illuminated by white light, you see a range of colors. Well, what makes red look red? It looks red because that area absorbs the blue, the green, and the yellow wavelengths of light and reflects the red wavelengths of light. Well, what makes blue look blue? It's because that area of the chart is absorbing the red, the yellow, and the green wavelengths and reflecting the blue wavelengths. Let's summarize what you've learned in this video. When light is incident on a material, three things can happen. Light can be reflected, either specularly, like off a mirror, or diffusely being scattered, or both. Light energy can be absorbed into the material. 
usually the absorbed light energy is dissipated as heat energy. And light can be transmitted through a material. When light is transmitted through a material, refraction can take place, the bending of the waves of light. How much refraction depends upon the density and optical properties of the material. And finally, you learned that these three effects, reflection, absorption, and transmission, are going to depend upon the wavelength of light and the particular material characteristics. So now you're ready for the fourth video in the series, which are going to take what you've learned in these first three videos and provide more detailed information that's going to be very valuable to you when you make your machine vision systems.